Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper. Welcome to this week's edition of Takedown TV. By the way, Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays to each and every one of you. Let's turn our attention to the news. The international season is just weeks away, and the men's freestyle squad is working out the Kingston, Colorado Springs. Kyle Snyder and company are coming off a second-place finish at the World Clubs Cup and will next travel to Russia for the always tough Ivan Uregan Memorial. USA Wrestling's Taylor Miller talked with the team about the historic season and what lies ahead. Kyle Snyder here at the Olympic Training Center. Um, let's talk about what was going on this week at camp. Uh, I got to camp a little bit late because I had to take some final exams and we were just getting back from Iran. But uh, the whole national team was here, plus a bunch of other wrestlers, uh, a lot of good training partners. So I love camp. Um, you know, it's good to mix it up with different guys and learn from different coaches. I'm familiar with a lot of the people here, but it's always nice to train together and get to be together for a little bit. You just got back from your run at World Clubs Cup. Can you just talk about that experience, what it was like for you? It was a fun. Titan Mercury team had a, a second place showing. Uh, came down last match. We lost against a team Easy Pipe from Iran. Um, it was a really fun tournament. We have a good time together. Really good team bonding out there. and uh, Just really good competition. Iran always brings good teams together and pieces together. A couple foreigners on the team to, to really give us a um, a good push to really challenge ourselves and, and we found that out there so what are some things that you took away from that tournament personally um myself i, I need to work on you know a couple of positions which i lost in the finals against uh this year's world champ by, by one point so um a couple of positions i haven't encountered in the past couple of months and i got exposed there so um it's good it's only december and, and i know what i need to work on for these next couple of months what are some tournaments that you're looking at going to? I'm looking at going to the Cuba. I'm looking at going into Ukraine, uh, possibly, and then like and then like stuff like the World Cup and everything. And then uh, I'm looking to go to the U.S. Open mainly because I have to this year. But a uh, funny story. I, <laughs> I asked Quiz. I'm like, Hey, Quiz, how do you get into the U.S. Open? <laughs> because I never, I've never wrestled it. <laughs> so he's like, Jaden, it's an open. I'm like, oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was my brain fart, my bad. So, going to that, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna. So, you're planning on moving up, right? Oh, yeah, I'm 92. 92. 92. I didn't think that was such a secret or anything. Like, people, I, have a, I said it last time in Worlds, you know, I'm going 92. Um, but, but, yeah, I, I enjoy the new weight, and I look forward to competing there. Cool. Yeah, David Taylor right here at the Olympic Training Center, um, here for the December camp. Talk about what this week was like for you. It was a good week. Uh, you know, a good handful of us were uh, in Iran last week for the World Clubs Cup. Got back uh, Saturday evening, spent Sunday with our families, and then got on the plane Monday and came back out here for training camp this week. So, you know, I'm just, I enjoy doing this because I like the group of people that we're with. You know, it's just a lot of camaraderie. A lot of my really good friends are in this room. So anytime we get to spend a couple weeks together training, learning, sharing knowledge, it's always a good thing. So you go to Iran, you go 4-0, right? Uh, yeah, 4-0 yeah. or 4 fit. Okay. Um, but you're on a new weight. Talk about how you're feeling and how the trans transition's been for you. Well, it's not a new weight anymore. Uh, I, I mean, I made the transition to 2016, so this is my third year in this weight class, and I feel great. I don't even consider it a transition anymore. This is just the best I've ever felt, the best I've ever wrestled is at this weight class. So, um, you know, just to build off of a solid season last year, um, I'm just excited to continue wrestling. You know, I just getting those, those matches under my belt at the World Clubs Cup is good. Anytime you get the opportunity to go wrestle five matches overseas against international competition, that's a good opportunity. Um, so coming off that and then getting into our January camp, and then I'm excited to go to the Eurigan for the first time at the end of January. So I haven't been to Russia since the University of World Games uh, 2013. Um, I went to Kazan, so it's my first time in a while. I've been excited to get back there, and it's the toughest term in the world, so I'm really going to challenge myself. All right, stay tuned. When we return, we'll take you through the weekend in college wrestling. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Casey's General Stores, famous for pizza. Presenting Casey's Pizza to Pump Payoff, where the more you buy, the more you save. Pad your pocket by saving 10 cents per gallon for each large Casey's pizza you purchase. Two pizzas saves you 20 cents. Three pizzas, 30 cents. The savings keep piling up. This month, dessert's on us. Get a pre-order of Casey's Chow with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm 
Don Benaveni, Benaveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately a thousand dollars a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting and you should too. Six-ranked North Carolina State traveled to Lincoln on Friday and straight up slammed Nebraska 29-3. The pack took 9 of 10 against the Huskers, downing three top 10 wrestlers in the process. The reigning ACC Wrestler of the Week, Hayden Hilde, improved to a perfect 8-0 on the year, defeating 7th-ranked Tyler Berger 6-3. In a shootout at 184, the pack's third-ranked Pete Renda took down sixth-ranked Taylor Benz 9-6. And senior Kevin Jack, well, he picked up his 100th career victory, hitting three takedowns on his way to an easy 9-3 victory over Chad Red. North Carolina State would then travel to Nevada, where they won three individual titles in the team trophy on Sunday at the Reno Tournament of Champions. Highlighting the Beast of the East High School Tournament, Ohio State and Princeton squared off on Friday at the University of Delaware. The Bucks have been a bonus point machine all season long, and that trend continued against the Tigers as OSU won six bouts by major decision, tech ball, or pin. Well, the pin, by the way, came at 174, where Bo Jordan locked up Riley DeMoss just a minute 57 into the first. Miles Barton kept his undefeated season alive with a 19-4 tech fall at 84, while Joey McKenna, Micah Jordan, Colin Moore, and Tashawn Campbell all picked up major decisions, 39 to nothing, the final from Newark. Well, the score was 39-0. There, there were there were a lot more. Uh, there was a lot of close matches, right? So, so I guess if there's one thing, if you win one out of three close matches, you think one way. When you win all the close ones, uh, it's more than just hey, we you know we found a way to win. So. Uh, um, we won a freshman at 25, 10 seconds to go, goes back to the center, that sticks in my mind. Goes back in the center, finds a way to get a reversal and back points to win the match. You need the back points, but you need a reversal. The, key shot was a, the match of the night was, was 49. That was the match tonight. Um, I think both guys could have been a little more offensive. We could have scored, shot a little more, but but when you can ride like Keyshawn did, and you ride the guy out, I mean, Keyshawn has a number of ways to beat you. And uh, his top game is really good. So... Uh, that was that was probably the that was probably the match line, and then and then the other one that sticks out for me is Colin Moore. Uh, Colin just, I mean, that's a good young freshman who's strong, and Colin just kept coming as he does, and uh, so we're continuing to learn things about our team from an energy standpoint. You know, with a with a one hour weigh in, and I thought overall energy looked pretty good. All right, with the Bucks hot on their heels, the top-ranked Nittany Lions play host to the Indiana Hoosiers Saturday. Elijah Oliver silenced the sold-out crowd with a decision at 125, but that was the only thing that went right for the road team as IU dropped nine straight bouts to close the duel. Following a major by Corey Keener, Jared Cortez picked up his first-ranked win of the year, edging out Cole Weaver 7-6. Zane Rutherford, Jason Nolf, Bo Nickel all won by pin as the Lions just hammered the Hoosiers 44-3. I think overall, I think... Uh, the guys wrestle well. Um, even I think Schnupp is making progress. I thought he did a nice job and uh, stayed in good position and gave himself a chance to win a match. I mean, he got taken down at the end of the periods, but did a nice job. He's getting better. I think all the way up and down the lineup, the guys are improving, and that's what we're looking for. Coach Casey, right before I stepped on the mat, um, you know, I sometimes when I go out there, I you know lock up a little bit and. Um, that's a tendency I'm going to have to change going forward and a tendency I've had to fix moving forward. But um, Coach Casey said to, you know, just go play wrestle. Go go out there and you're great when you play wrestle and flow and just throw yourself in there. So, um, you know, a six to five match, you know, obviously 11 points to the board. Um, you know, it wasn't a 2-0 match. So I think uh, adjustments made from Lehigh or 
uh, just letting it fly and just, you know, give myself more opportunities to, to uh, wrestle where I'm good. So quite a few blowouts over the weekend, but Oklahoma and App State came down to the final bout. OU opened with back-to-back -back victories from Davion Jeffries and Justin Thomas, but an upset at 74 sparked a four-match winning streak for the Mountaineers. After a win by Christian Moody, Jacob Rubio put the Sooners back in front with a major decision, and Mike Longo sealed the victory with an 8-6 decision over Irvin Enriquez. Oklahoma will return to action January 4th as they face the other Mountaineers, those of West Virginia. In East Coast action, Bucknell beat Pittsburgh for the first time in team history. The Panthers took a seven-point lead Sunday after two bouts, but the Bison came storming back to win six of the next seven. Tyler Smith secured his second-ranked victory of the year and the 85th of his career when he defeated Nick Zanetta 5-2 at 141. How did Garrett Hoffman do? Well, he scored four points in the final period to upset Kellen Stout 6-4 at 197. Pittsburgh closed the duel with a pin from Ryan Solomon, but still came up four points shy, 20 to 16. Won their second home loss of the weekend, Nebraska fell to North Carolina Sunday, 22 to 14 the final. Fourth ranked Troy Heilman notched a top 10 victory at 149. And then Kennedy Monday pulled out the biggest upset of the weekend and maybe the season when he pinned Tyler Berger to put the Tar Heels up 12. Nebraska answered with three straight victories in the middleweights, but decisions by Danny Chade and Corey Daniel were enough to seal North Carolina's second dual win of the year. On our way to break, here's Scotty Goodale, mic'd up at the Scarlet Knights practice. You're watching Takedown, thanks to McBride Matt. Stay tuned. Got about 12 in the go. Get yourself ready. Fight to get in. Fight to get in. Cut them off. Use your hands. Cut them off. I want you to start with a wrist. Give him a wrist. You got to wrestle out of it. Outside knee up. Push over it with your elbows. Fight to get in. Fight to get in. Fight to get in. Cut them off. Chase it. Chase it. Chase it. Good scrap. Start here. Boom. And let's go to work. Heel and ankle. Watch dive through. You're good. Watch elbows. Watch hands. You're good. You're good. Sit back on his knees. Good, yes? Get on his. <laughs> wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure. Stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com. Presenting Casey's Pizza to Pump Payoff, where the more you buy, the more you save. Pad your pocket by saving 10 cents per gallon for each large Casey's Pizza you purchase. Two pizzas saves you 20 cents. Three pizzas, 30 cents. The savings keep piling up. This month, dessert's on us. Get a pre-order of Casey's Chow with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza.
With 10 All-Americans in the past two seasons, Iowa Western has been elite. The only thing missing for the second-ranked Reavers was a room. While competing for national titles, the team was still rolling up the mats and sharing space with other sports on campus. That's no longer an issue for Josh Watts and company. The Reavers now reside in one of the top JUCO facilities in the country. Let's take a look. It's been a program on the rise. It's been ranked number one, number two in each of the last two years. And it gets better. The Iowa Western Wrestling Program has some new digs, and dig this. Along with a football facility, it stands alone at or near the top in all of Juco land. Now forget about a majority decision or a tech fall. This new building is easily a first period pin. Nationals last year, 184 pound final. <laughs> Preston Lauderback makes history. The sophomore becomes Iowa Western's first national champion. Lauderback is immortalized on the wall at the new Reaver Performance Athletic Center. Also upstairs, the wrestling facilities are of championship caliber as well. It's big. <laughs> it's big. It's a lot bigger than what we had in the, in the old gym. Um, and then when you walk into the building, it's pretty spectacular. We have all the, the TVs, all the video stuff to analyze video. Um, the locker room's fantastic. Um, I mean, we have everything that, that we need. Man, this place is nice. It's real nice. Our own lockers, our name plates up on the lockers. Uh, just make it our own kind of place. We can come in here and just hang out with each other and talk if we want to. Wow, this is crazy. I mean, there's no other JUCO in this country with a facility like this. Going from what we had to this is it's like hitting a lotto. Made training a little easier, more, much more functional. You know, we have more mat space. We don't have guys going over top of each other, uh, getting hurt doing that. So we have a lot more space for that. I think it creates value uh, for the guys. You know, when they come in, they see a nice facility. Uh, I think they're a little extra motivated by that. I'm there this year for sure, and just gotta keep working and it makes everybody want to work hard with this kind of facility like this. Do you see in all this, this artwork and everything they're putting in here, it's, you have to succeed. You know, this is a facility for success, facility for champions, we gotta be champions. So in the end, you go from the outhouse to the penthouse. Yeah, 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 it's definitely a big step up and so we just need to get the results now. The results will come in late February. Iowa Western hosts the NJCAA National Tournament for the third year in a row. But for now, a lot of blood, sweat, and wow. The Reaver Performance Athletic Center once again proof positive that champions do play or wrestle in Reaver country. Special thanks to J.J. Davis and the students at CBTV for that great feature on the new home of Iowa Western Wrestling. Hey, stay tuned. We're going to catch up with Jay Robinson. That's after the break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Nike Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built.
Well, he's been a great friend of this program from the very beginning, and for 20-plus years, we looked to Jay Robinson for both inspiration and guidance. The Hall of Fame coach joined us on Takedown Radio Saturday to talk about a lot of things, including the growth and direction of our sport. It's a little different time of year for you in that uh, normally you're in the meat of the season with the balance. Uh, how are you filling your days uh, at this point in your career? We do a lot with uh, camp, getting ready for camp, and then we're uh, – we're working on building a, uh, a leadership um, course. Okay. A three or four day leadership course for high school kids. It's that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things that they call leadership, but they're really more individual development. And so we want to do something to where young people can understand what it really is to be a leader. Is that something you can you see yourself taking around the country? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we want to, it's kind of like the intensive camp is that you, you have an idea. And, you know, Ranger School, which I was lucky enough to attend, is, is the number one small leadership school in the military. I mean, even Navy SEALs go there for later leadership. So you, what you want to do is you want to try and get these skills out to young people. So you hear a lot of stuff about, uh, you know, making good decisions and, and all that stuff is true, but that's an individual thing. And, and the leadership is more about having a, a, a vision and then being able to uh, verbalize that, that vision and then get people on board to do what you want them to do. Recently, it was announced that Presbyterian University in South Carolina would add a men's and women's program at the D1 level. What are your thoughts about Presbyterian's addition of Division I uh, wrestling? I mean, I think, it's a, I think it's a great addition, and I think it's part- Mark Cody will do a good job. Um, one of the things that I've always tried to do as far as marketing is, if you look at marketing, it's like you're marketing any commodity. Is You're trying to get people to understand what the benefits are. And and it's one of the things that I don't, I'm not sure that we do well enough in wrestling in that in a world to where things are, for lack of a word, are getting a little bit soft and easy, parents want their kids to be able to deal with some adversity, some hard things, because we as parents, and including myself, we want to take that off of our kids. But yet that's the thing that makes them grow. When they when they fall down, they get back up. And so I think that if we, if, if people like Mark Cody and Presbyterian University can, can show the value of what you're going to get long-term in wrestling, um, the ability, I, I mean, one of the things is, one of the things that people don't talk about, they always talk about the weight setting and how hard it is. But if you look at the opposite side of it is what you're learning to do is, unlike any other athlete, is that you don't feel the greatest when you go to compete, but you have to compete at 100% level. And that teaches you something that's very unique in the world today is to be able to function under direct. You know, failure only happens when you stop trying. Right? Yes, that's good. I mean, yeah, I mean, failure is only when you stop trying. And, and you know, and you hear you hear people a lot of times, you'll hear, you know, when you're stumbling, uh, uh, people will say uh, something like, maybe the Lord's trying to tell you something, right? And, and in a way, it's a very negative thing, because I would say just the opposite is what he's really trying to do is find out how important it is to you, how many times... Are you going to fall down and get back up? When I was a when I was a freshman uh, on a freshman team, and I just went out for wrestling, I was zero and seven going into my last match. I hadn't won a match all year, and I finally pulled it out at the end. And and what is it teaches you is to stay in the game, to stay in the game, and stay in the game. And then the next year I got better, and junior year I won, and then my senior year I won again, and so. Those are skills that you, you're not born with those skills, you know, and I think that if wrestling was to focus on those things and tell people and young people, you know, what it can do for your, your kids, I think that's the thing you, you want to do because in a world that, that, that you learn, like our parents learn to save and be thrifty because they lived through the Depression. We don't live through a depression, so we don't really know what that means. So you have to artificially create that environment so that we could learn. And my parents were really good at that. And that's what you have to do, I think, with teaching young people skills, 
is you make the assumption that these skills are good for them, and we're going to teach them to. Well, that'll do it for this week. Special thanks to Taylor Miller, Richard Emmel, Gary Abbott, and all of our good friends at USA Wrestling. And a special shout out to our buddy Jay Robb. It's always good to talk to him. Don't forget to visit us online for the breaking wrestling news, plus weekly prizes and the longest running radio show in our sport. It's all available at TakedownWrestle.com. From our studios in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. For Brad Johnson, Tony Hager, and The Balance, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>